Hi, welcome to another video on the ICOM Neon 9100. Tonight's program is looking at the satellite features on the ICOM 9100, how they operate and how they interface to some of the software available on the market. It's not unusual to see a satellite functions on a multi-mode VHF UHF radio like the ICOM 910 or even some of the old transceivers like TS790, FT736R. All these radios had some really, really nice features on them. What makes it interesting about the 9100 is that they're combined with an HF radio and a 6 meter radio, so you've got quite an interesting shack in a box feature. So let's have a look at some of the features on the ICOM 9100 regarding satellite operation and also how they interface into some of the other parts of the software. I've had a chance to use the ICOM 9100 with two packages Ham Radio Deluxe, written by HB9DRV, and SAT32PC. I don't really know much about either of these packages, and to be fair, the i 3 c 9100 is so new that neither of these have been updated to use the functionality of this new radio, or some of the band settings. So features like being able to put the IC9100 into satellite mode via CRV haven't been integrated yet. In these basic tests, I've connected the IC9100 via a USB cable to my laptop. I've then just run up each package separately and tried to access some basic functionality inside the software. Things like tracking of VFOs, setting of memories, and actually communicating from the software to the PC. Both packages have managed okay. Neither of them have exact settings for the IC9100, but that doesn't stop them working. I would say the best package is SAP32PC in that it's more complex and allows better functionality with the IC9100 in its current state. Ham Radio to Deluxe also uses the ICOM 910 settings. It didn't seem to interface in the same way as the SAP32 PC, and I couldn't find a way of actually setting both VFOs up to track. So I think in, both, in these terms, SAP32 PC is probably the one to use with the IC9100 at the moment until Ham Radio Deluxe is updated. Both the packages seem to offer a fairly good uh, satellite functions if you're interested in that area, so they're both worth looking at. The IC9100 is very like some of the older satellite tra capable transceivers like the FT736R and TS790. It's able to send on the uplink while listening in the downlink at the same time, which is quite useful when you're able to find yourself on, on a satellite transponder. The 9100 has the 23cm module as well, the 2m and 70cm capabilities. And all three of these can be mixed in any combination to transmit on, say, 23 while listening on 432, or transmitting on 23 while listening on 2m, or transmitting on 2 or 70 while listening on 23. You're also capable of actually selecting whether the twin VFOs actually track in normal or reverse. And I'll show you what I mean by this actually on the display. It's easier to show you that way. The three antenna connectors on the IC9100 make interfacing for a satellite station quite easy. For example, all three bands are separated out, their PTTs are separated out, which means it's quite easy to put a 23cm amplifier in line, or a pre-amplifier on 2 and 70, and be able to switch around on these. Don't forget that you can actually power the pre-amplifier on 2 meters, 70 and 23 using the preamp function we talked about in a previous video. Let's look at the IC9100 front panel now, look at some of the features it offers in satellite mode and how they're driven. Accessing the satellite modes on the transceiver is quite easy. There's a number of buttons on the keypad on the right hand side of the radio dedicated to the satellite features. One is this satellite button here. You also have sub-controls here for, for switching between the main and the sub-VFOs in satellite mode, and a switch here to swing between normal and reverse modes. The main sub and band buttons here allow you to set 2 meters, 70 or 23 centimeters, and then swap between the receivers. You can't select receivers on the same band, i.e. it's not possible to have a receiver on 2 meters and the transmitter on 2 meters. The VFO memory uh, button here 
and also the memory channel dial here allow you to dial up 20 dedicated satellite channels. And they store information such as whether the uh, VFOs are tracking in normal or reverse and which uh, bands are selected on main and sub. I'm sure the uh, dedicated memory management software will allow you to edit these in a fairly good way. And if you go into the uh, memory system here, you can actually set up uh, alphanumerics for the satellites as well. To access the satellite features, you simply press the satellites button. You'll notice that the display has now changed. We've now got an enunciator in the corner here that says satellite, and in this case it says normal. That means that the two VFOs will track together. So if I move the VFO up in frequency on the subband, the main band will track, also going in an upwards way. If I move that to reverse, it'll actually mean that they go in opposite directions. This is quite useful where you have an inverting transponder and the uh, transmitter will go a different way to the receiver. If I change the Morand, I do this by pressing the normal reverse button on the number 7 key. And if I press it, you'll now see that it says reverse. What this means is that in normal mode, the two VFOs will track together. As you can see here, the frequency is going up, but they're both tracking in the same direction. If I go into NOR and reverse now and do it the other way, you'll notice that as I go down in frequency on the main, the sub receiver is actually going up in frequency. I've done this in FM so you can see the biggest uh, changes, but you can also do this in SSB and CW. You can also do split modes as well, so for example, you could transmit on FM while receiving an SSB. Of course, you can also do packet radio. There is also a connector on the back panel for TNCs, and you can do 9600K packet with this transceiver straight out of the box. As I said before, Ham Radio Deluxe and SAT32 PC have not been yet updated for the IC9100. That means this satellite mode isn't yet available on the menus of both of these packages. What I actually did to get into the satellite mode and track the VFOs was actually to take the satellite mode off. That means I can just use the VFOs as a main and a sub receiver in a straight way. Both packages were able to track the VFOs this way, but I would say that SAT32 PC was the better of the two. The manual does have a good sec section on satellite operating. So if you look in chapter 12 in the handbook of the IC9100, you should find plenty of information to help you interface it into your station, and also working out how to set the VFOs, the tracking selection, and then programming up the satellite memories. So here we are in the satellite mode on the actual panel of the radio itself. You'll see occasionally that the VFOs are actually swapping over and if you look in the corner here you'll see that the sub receiver occasionally receives data from the updates from SAT PC32 and it will then change the actual display as it's just done there. This is actually now tracking uh, the VFOs out of SAT PC32 so in that way it's actually working quite well. I can also set it up so that the satellite functions in and working However, to be honest, this is not really useful, and um, SAT32 PC can actually do everything it needs to do. So in this way, I would say this is a tick in the box and it's working. So the Doppler is being tracked, the VFOs are tracking, and it's actually use usable as a satellite for a transceiver, even though it's only on the IC910 settings. So that was quite a fun evening. I've actually proven that the IC9100 it's quite a capable satellite transceiver, and I'm sure the satellite b uh, boys will enjoy playing with this radio as much as they have done with older transceivers like the TS790, and of course the good old satellite transceiver of choice, the FT736R. With this modern receivers, it will certainly make a big difference on receiving those downlinks on the satellites. After a week of ownership, I'm still very impressed with the IC9100. 
It really is a very capable transceiver and very, very flexible. I had some interesting times on Tropo this week on 2 meters, and it was really interesting to use WSJT to look at some of the weaker beacons. The USB audio feature really works well. I guess the only thing that's missing on this is the USB PTT function. I guess WSJT author will get round to that sometime. I did actually find some new features, and that was one that was actually documented in the manual. So it really is an advocate of RTFM. That is about the AGC function, and you get to change the AGC to off by going into, say, the fast setting and going into the actual menu item to change the characteristic of it. If you turn the main VFO knob, you'll actually get right down to the off. It was documented, but I didn't really read this. The IC9100 should be a really capable satellite transceiver, certainly as good as the old FT736R. With the IC9100's modern gas fed front ends and the software capabilities and audio and CIV data over USB, I think it's a real winner. I hope you'll enjoy playing with it as much as I have.